how are you? It's 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 really bloody bright out here. <laughs> we're, we're we're trying to obviously enjoy this amazing weather, but um, yeah, hopefully you can see us. We can see you. Let me just have focus. Right, Emily, do you want to start with the first really exciting bit of news well, tonight? First things first. Alan is about to get up, walk behind the camera, and turn yeah. that camera because we are going to be doing Instagram TV whilst we're doing a Facebook Live today. Woohoo! The power of social media. We've never done this before. We've um, just launched our... It's just flashed up and says, I'm live in the outside bride. Oh, good to know. Um, we have just launched our Instagram TV, IGTV channel over on Instagram. So we thought we'd start up with our inaugural video on Instagram TV with an Ask an Expert. So people on Instagram who aren't in this group yet can get a feel for what we do. What the, what the group's about, what we talk about on a weekly session and stuff like that, and maybe might get some new followers next week. Yeah, absolutely. <coughs> I mean, because w when we do these Ask an Expert, they're all on YouTube, on the Bay Lily Bell Tent yeah. channel, uh, youtube.com forward slash C forward slash Bay Lily Bell Tent, so you can go and watch all of them. Obviously, they're in this group as well. And then, yeah, we're going to put the odd highlight in uh, Instagram TV as well. So we're very excited so about So very this, excited. We? So we will halfway through, because I think we can only do 10 minutes on Instagram yes. Live, or Instagram TV. Emma says hello. Hi. Hello, Emma. Hi, um, Hannah as well. So we will, um, t in 10 minutes time, run off and turn off the recording. Yes. Okay, right. Um, first thing is, I, if Kerry's watching tonight. Hi, Sam. You're right. I do have a glass of water. But I do have a gin and tonic as well. Um, Kerry in this group, who is getting married sometime in the future, um, is also owns a beauty salon, and her staff very kindly took care of me today and gave me the world's best massage, but properly like you know, in with the elbows. We've had a very busy week, haven't we, the last last ten days? Yeah, we don't like to talk about it. <laughs> Lo lots of jobs going on, lots of hungry tents. Is went, there anything <laughs> we don't like to talk a, about? We've had a fairly. I need to blow my nose. Hay fever. We've Keep had a fairly. <laughs> fairly low key day today so I thought you know what I'll try and reset my shoulders a little bit and they went to town so I did say I would keep drinking water to flush out the toxins but it's uh, too nice tonight note, not to have a gin I'm, tonic I miss the like two or three litres a day and Emily's misses two or three sips of water a day so this is actually but I like to think me. that the tonic in the gin and tonic you know full of quinine as well right so I've had this debate that you know alcohol dehydrates you mm. I've argued that tonic water in a gin and tonic hydrates I you, believe so so you can't be dehydrated right. drinking gin and tonic does anyone know if that's true or not feel free to uh, no, so some reason it's updating on my phone but not updating well, on the computer because yeah, really I can't anyway. really read that so if I'm a bit slow at responding to comments today guys because the computer down here isn't really posting any comments um, is this working can we get a thumb up from just one person to make sure it's working because I've actually got some funny messages on my phone so if you are watching this a thumb up would be helpful about now we'll see We'll see. Anyway, <laughs> right, so what have we got on Ask an Expert Live number 23? We're outside again because it was so amazing. It's gorgeous, you might as well. Um, yeah, that's it on our heat wave week. Right, do we take it no one's watching as there is no thumbs up happening? No, we don't know. It might be a signal shift. It might be Anyhow, we yes. did have a question today. Do we have that written down from who? Um, Sam, she's watching. Oh, yeah, hi, Sam. Oh, there we go. We got a thumb up. Fantastic. Thank you for that. So, Sam's question was I, uh, Sam, apologies if I misunderstood this, but we, we took it as you've got a fantastic wedding lined up, you've got some bits and bobs lined up, but you're after a couple of added extras that weren't going to break the bank, or you yeah. know, basically, as um, you know, some cool little things you could do that were free or, or cheap or something like that. Yeah, so I, I think I, I took from your question on, on the group was about um, a bit of DIY in terms of lawn games and stuff like that, things you can do that are cost effective because I know you're on, a, on quite a budget. So things you can do for lawn games are always a win, especially if you've got a marquee, which I know you've, you've got a big marquee kind of event going on. Um, get people outside, especially if you've got a dress marquee where you're not quite ready to share with your group straight away. You know, sometimes when, when people arrive from their ceremony, you don't always want them to walk straight up to their table, sit down and make themselves comfy because food might be a little bit delayed or further, further into the afternoon. Mm. Um, so getting people outside is always a really, really good thing to do. Um, lawn games, are great um, you can either get them hired from companies you can go and buy your own the range is a massive range of outdoor range of the range, range of, of out, outdoor range. games from giant jenga to croquet to all that stuff. 
But Hi, Laura. if you are on quite a tight budget and you really don't have the budget to go and buy lawn games for that, I would say there are some really easy quick wins you can do that are just as effective that you can do make yourself. For example, tin can alleys. Get yourself to Tesco, buy yourself six, eight cans of, of value beans. You know, they're 20, what, 25p a can? Well, they used to be. They don't eat baked beans. Do you remember the Great Baked Bean War? <laughs> yeah. When was the Great Baked Bean War? Early 90s? Mid, oh, I like, I don't beans mean, were I don't as cheap as bean. 2p. The Great but Baked Bean War. Get some spray paint, get them sprayed, and get yourself a tin can alley or a coconut shy. Oh, go. dear. A, a coconut shy or you can do um, get some lengths of rope and do like tic-tac-toe, noughts and crosses on the ground. Um, you can do ring tosses. Ring tosses are really easy. Get some glass bottles, get them painted up or filled with different coloured um, sands or things like that and use as your rings, you can use embroidery hoops. You know, they're, they're cheap, again, the range or any kind of um, Wilco's do cheap ones and get them wrapped over with ribbon and stuff and use them as ring tosses. You can just get some really simple, quick, quick things put together that don't well, actually. Well, Jenga's, you know, you could literally go to B and Q and buy some two before or whatever. Well, I, I don't know. I have no idea. Batten. T batten. Mm. Some not. Well, it's not battens around like that. So it would be like two before and just chop that up and yeah. you've got a homemade Jenga. Um, I'm just trying to think of some of the stuff we used to do in Scouts. Don't, don't, to be don't forget, even if you are on a tight budget when it comes to buying things, the, be the benefit of buying things is that you can sell them afterwards and, and buying, um, using even face bay and things like that, you can really can move it on. There's we, we, a lot of wedding selling groups, isn't there? So. People are always looking for something to add to their, to their day. So I'm thinking of some other silly things like... Um, making stilts out of baked bean, baked bean cans and strings, yeah. stilts. And we used to do um, ski plank races. So you'd get two planks with like four hoops on each one. So four people. And then you'd have to race against another team around a course. Just Lots get a bit creative. Things. Think about things you do. And there again, must be a Pinterest yeah. thing. Oh, for, there's yeah. plenty of Pinterest. But don't forget, and we say this week in, week, week out, you can go to town with all the activities in the world. You can have a whole lawn full of games. You can have silly a Olympics. You can have a photo booth over there. You can get hanging frames over there. You can get whatever you want. But ultimately, don't go to town too much because people are quite happy to sit there on the grass with a drink in their hand and chat to people because they've not seen a lot of these people come to a wedding and they've not seen each other for months, years maybe, or you know don't even know each other. So they're getting that time just to mingle and talk. The odd game on the ground is fantastic, but you don't have to entertain for every second of every every minute no, of every day. No. Just put some token things out, and people make. The other thing I, I, I do like is a good old space hopper. Amazon do some really cute. Um, they've got funny faces. We've got on. one there and one yeah. there. They live in They're our backyard. About six, garden. six quid for a space hopper, and then after that, the kids have used them for things. So j just get yourself yeah. a couple, two, two or three things. Don't go overboard, and people will be absolutely fine with. Or what prosecco got. pong. Beer pong, prosecco pong. Prosecco pong. Get some I like red, that. red cups and just do beer pong. You know, people are going to be drinking start, anyway. Start the party early. That's it. Oh, I think. No, hold on. No, we've got all right. We've got another minute or so actually before we need to say goodbye to Instagram. Ah, yes. Yes. So uh, for those who missed this, we're also recording ten minutes. The first ten minutes for Instagram TV today. Um, actually, that's pretty much ten minutes. Should we say goodbye yep. to Instagram? Bye to Instagram. Bye, Insta Bye Instagram. If you'd like to know more about Ask an Expert, then come over to Facebook for the group, The Outside Bride, or on the page, or on the website. Links are in our bio and you can come and find out more and watch this live every week. Bye Instagram. Right, that's been long. Right, they're gone. We can get on with the real stuff now. No, Sam, that was the real stuff. I'm only joking. <laughs> um, so what we thought we'd do tonight, Sam, hopefully that answers your question. Feel free to like um, elaborate a bit more if you want us to come up with some more stuff. It's really not a problem at all. And any of the rest of you watching tonight, if you have any questions about your wedding or, or anything really just feel free to ask a question I mean in the past we've answered questions about insurance we've answered questions about uh, mother-in-laws I was trying to think of the word mother-in-law to be in-laws in involved getting the in-laws <laughs> yes we've had family politic questions before uh, we've had practical questions about generators and layouts and all sorts of lighting and and everything so no question is too big or too small and if we don't know the answer we will just say we don't know the answer but we know enough people where we can go and get the answer absolutely right so, unless we've got questions for anyone at the moment watching um 
I thought we would take the chance today. We posted a blog today. Um, um, actually, we posted it on June the 15th. I'm not quite sure what happened. Oh, I might have drafted it on, Ju on June the 15th. Oh, right. So if you go onto the Outside Bride blog site, uh, on June the 15th, under planning, is 10 top it's tips featured for... At the moment. A, it's okay. Oh, is it? 10 top tips for a stress-free wedding. So this was kindly written by a, a guest poster, um, Kim Thackeray, from Be Bespoken Beyond Events, who does happen to be a wedding planner and coordinator uh, but she wrote us her top 10 tips for a stress-free wedding if you're getting married not necessarily outside in any kind of environment really but it kind of applied to what we're doing so i thought we'd just go feel free to go and read it it's a lovely post yeah um, but we're just going... I, well, i'll tell you what i do i'll put the link in this feed when we finish yeah. so you can just click straight on it rather than try and having to find it but kim brought up some really good points that are transferable to any type of wedding as well so i thought we'd go through one to ten very brilliant. We've covered yeah, lots we of try it and do it as quick. We try and rattle through it actually, because otherwise we get caught in conversation. So number one is plan ahead. Planning ahead. I've got thoughts on this. So I have a few things that I always bang on about when it comes to wedding. Now planning ahead. What Kim's talking about is spreadsheets and notebooks and everything, and you really need that. But step, step. That's halfway between step and stage. Step one of planning ahead is what I call Sunday night. Sunday night, you and your husband to be, or you and your wife to be, or whoever you the two of you sit there iPads tablets smartphones computers and think about what you want your wedding to feel like what you want it to feel like what you want people to see and do what you want to have their time and just write or you know Pinterest it write it down or whatever that step one of planning ahead after that it's spreadsheets it's everything write it down but no budget it straight away work out what you have to spend on that try to try to stick to your budget as much as you can but also understand that sometimes things that cost more than you think in your head so do your research as well don't ever just go with the first person you see get I'll a couple of get quotes get yourself a couple of quotes just to see where you're benchmarking across those those three quotes as well yeah. so because because actually this is something Emily and I come up against with Bay Lily Bell Tents. There's not a lot of repeat business in the wedding no. industry. So because there's not a lot of repeat business, you you find and this pains me to admit it, but there's a lot of companies not given an amazing experience. So check your uh, reviews, check your feedback, asking some of the groups what this company are like. You know, get to know them, ask to meet them, ask to see something else. But also, We've way gone yeah, off on a tangent. Yeah. But also, if you do have key suppliers that you are really like they're non-negotiable you really want that caterer you really want that photographer you, you really, really want, want that, that belting company, company. Yeah. <laughs> make sure you give them the contact straight away because these very popular companies get booked well so we do about. don't we we have 25 six key weekends of the summer yeah. so that's it there's only 26 weekends in our summer and they fill up so quickly and we, we're taking more. inquiries and bookings for 19 and for 2020 now um Keep going. So, we need to we need yeah, to so, so, we're so gonna wrap Bear that in mind with any, any key supplies that you want, get them booked in, get their quotes in straight away and get that in the diary yeah. straight away. We, so we spent three right. minutes on point one. There's ten, we can't do half an hour more. <laughs> right, number two, don't go overboard. Keep it simple. Keep it simple. Trust me, your guests right, I understand, we understand it wanting to look fab. We get that, we're on board with that. Your guests are not gonna know what style of chair you've got, they're not gonna know what your table plan was keep it simple stupid just remember that that doesn't mean you can't be beaut it can't be beautiful it can't be amazing but trust us you don't need to go over the top less is more in a wedding pick one or two key elements or oh, colors I yeah i am Come on. elements but don't don't use like we said before lanterns bunting fairy lights this blah 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 and have six or seven different things because it'll just look like a spew right have a dress rehearsal i think she means and um, everything so yeah, if, yeah. If, if you've got again a particular look in mind and we did this a few weeks ago get a table up do us some mock-ups of your tables get the feel for how your table is going to look if you've got specific table centers in mind and favors and you've got family style catering all on the table together look think about what's on your table do a mock-up of that table see how it works with makeup and hair and all that kind of stuff get yourself a trial booked in several times don't be disappointed on the day and as and obviously your ceremony as well if you want to do a run through with that just yes. make sure that you're as stress-free as possible by getting everything planned yes. out number Pro uh, 
Proper planning prevents piss poor performance. Right, keep going. <laughs> Brief your supplies. We've just sort of talked about this, really, yeah. haven't we? If you're going to be doing it by yourself and you're not going to be engaging with a wedding planner, we discussed this last week and last week. Wedding planner's um, number 10, actually, so I we'll know. come to that. But if you're going to be doing it yourselves, do make sure that every element, especially if it's an important element of your day, is written down on a piece of paper because people bless their hearts they're not mind readers and if you are no, in the I fold know. if you're getting your hair and makeup done over there or something over there and things need to happen I, yeah. people need to know what needs to happen and where and assume that every single person that you are in contact with is thick you know what I think one of the biggest things is right we're all different and if you're not a detail person you need to find someone who's Who a detail, detail person. person because you need to go into detail with your suppliers. Yep. Times, what they do, are they taking their litter away, etc. Et Everything needs to be written down. Everything. Delegate. Delegating, yes. So this this number five. This delegate. came very hard for me as when I was a bride and still does it in my day-to-day -day working life. But trust other people to get shit done. Excuse my language, get stuff done. You know, ultimately you cannot possibly enjoy your day if you are on the morning of your wedding setting everything up and going to speaking to that person and dealing with the caterer and do, you can't do it so make sure that you choose two or three really key people in your in your wedding party it might be a chief bridesmaid it might be the mother of the bride probably not the mother of the bride actually they, they want to enjoy their day too but maybe a best man yeah yeah if you trust your best man we all man, know we all know the, the best usher. man trust yeah, an usher trust an usher um, don't trust the best man fact just delegate based on six years of experience don't trust the best and man and if you're if you're not sure about how to organise something, get someone who can and let them do it for you. Otherwise, on the day, you'll be thinking about everything. Yeah. Let someone else worry Laura's about it. just said, Laura says, I find that one tough. Everyone wants to help. Hard to know what to delegate. Yeah. Do you know what, though? So sorry. Uh, no, that's fine. All, all I was going to say was, Laura, delegate some simple, simple stuff. Things. You know, whether it be collecting jam jars because you're going to do some tea like jam jars or whether it be you want some rustic table centres. Tell them exactly what you want, exactly what it wants to look like. What do they call this? A smart... Um, smart, smart goals. A smart goal or something like that. <laughs> you know, so, yeah, so specify exactly I, what you want and then just have to trust them. I do get that because I am a control freak myself and have been in, in, our, in, our, in our work. Yeah, in our I working haven't noticed. Life. Little things like when we go out on a bell tent job, making a bed, and no one ever does it the way I do it in terms of corners and pushing and cushion, and everything is never quite perfect. But people will keep hassling you for jobs and they all, they'll all want to say, let's help you, we want to support you. If you're getting stressed from that, that's another stress that you don't need anyway. So give them the easier. We yeah. had this conversation, but yeah, we did. With, so we said, with give the them mother, the mother of the bride, the yeah. mother of the groom, get them involved. wanting to be involved. Give them something that so, some, ultimately yeah. doesn't matter yeah. if they get it slightly tweaked. You know, if something's not quite right, they'll feel that they have, they have that sense of worth and they've been part of the wedding. But you won't feel so. Like, yeah. Or it that's might be something new, like, like task them with coming up with some free, easy, simple, cheap garden games silly well, who was it who had the wedding though that they'd they'd organised their entertainment and the mother had decided oh, that Mr. Actually, Robin oh hello Mr. Robin um, the, right the mother had decided that actually they, she didn't like that band so cancelled the band and organised some Cossack dances to come and do a Russian dance was, that was someone in the outside bride was it the outside yeah, bride yeah because that's not one of our friends We'd interesting oh there's an what's that sorry we get quite a lot of wildlife in here we've got a main road anyway sorry. The birds are going past. Sorry, uh, Laura. Good luck with that, and feel free to kind of we can talk about that another day, and we can elaborate on that a bit bigger if you like, because that yeah. is an important one. Have a plan B. That's a Number big six. one. Number six. Have a plan B, and um, for sure, and you would never believe it on a day like this. But the UK doesn't like the um, sun that according much. According to Chris Evans on Radio Two, seven days, seven days of rain in London apparently, yeah. out on average yeah. per year. Yeah, I don't apparently. Get that. But think about your ceremony if your ceremony can't happen outside because it is thunder and lightning and flash flooding and everything on top of that what Hello, can Mr. you Robin. do we've talked about this many times especially with weddings that i've managed or been yeah, a part yeah. of that on the day the, the, I, I used the example of the teepee wedding in march i had um our bell tents could not get on the field on the day because they'd had flash floods the, the week of that week and their teepee wedding and the granted it was a we'd had snow and everything else on top of I it i feel like chris packham with mr robin down here <laughs> I met Chris Packham in Jonglers, Southampton once. Keep going. <laughs> At the bar. Um, their teepee was literally with their carpet squidging on water and it was just not happy for anyone. No one was having a good time. So think about a plan B. Do you have extra indoor space? Can you, can you bring in extra marquees or uh, gazebos or 
bring in more umbrellas. There are com <coughs> companies like there's a company like um, Jolly Brolly that do last minute umbrella high. You can literally ring them up the day before and they'll cool you a load of umbrellas out or brightly coloured and that kind of stuff. Think about your plan B, wet weather plans, um, cater is not done, things are not happening, suppliers are calling in sick. What are you going to do if if it hits the proverbial fan. Yeah, step one of that, by the way, is have insurance. Yes. Don't, don't, uh, our pleasure, Laura. Sorry. So, uh, number seven, um, me going first, food and music matters. Yes. It, it absolutely does. Ultimately, your guests are coming to a giant party. That's it. You know, let's not beat around the bush. Yes, there's family. Yes, it's amazing that you guys are, you know, going to get married and spend the rest of your lives together. But the hundred odd people coming, especially your friends, uh, are coming for a giant piss up. Um, as well well as all the nice stuff um so food and music matters we we do get a lot of questions about what to how many drinks per hour um how much food what to do in the evening um look do you know what just just go over the top do, no, no, yeah. no do, do go do, over the do top do what you want and, and oh I'll yeah just, sorry any, do what you want anyone, to do. <laughs> do what you want yeah. if you want to have a, a three course sit down move on to emily's all oh, right that's how it's working, is it? Keep going. If you want to sit a three course sit down, yeah, meal, yeah, fantastic. yeah. I'm not saying don't if you want, on that. If you want, no. If you want to have just street food or, and that, yeah. you do whatever you want. Just I would say make sure that your quantities are good. Yeah. Um, because but no, what I'm saying is like fifty to like fifty to hundred quid, which I think is reasonable. I, you know, I can't speak for everyone. Would buy you a shed load of sweets to, um, you know, do a sweetie table or something. Yeah, but that's like not that. going to fill you up. No, it's not going to. I'm not saying that's the main meal. All, all I'm it, saying is, all extra. I'm saying, all I'm saying is make, making sure. All I'm saying, <laughs> go on. I'm only saying. Um, you. Your quantities are right because no one likes hundred guests, especially if you're in the middle of nowhere and there's no, not even like a Domino's pizza down the road to kind of call in some extra food. And um, making sure that you c account for any um, dietary requirements because again, we we had uh, quite a few vegans at our, or vegetarians at our wedding that yeah. had in the middle of nowhere we had to make sure that we had enough food to cover them making sure that your quantities of alcohol are right go again if you're doing sale or return make sure you buy more than you need because you can return that yeah, ab absolutely um, you can return alcohol to Tesco's or yeah. get a bar company and that does pay by drink rather than how much you, you have to buy at the time yes. just think think about what you need and make sure everyone gets merry and has a full tummy because no one wants to go home on an empty stomach. definitely number eight don't forget to eat that's, that's a big you. one that's you guys you, yeah, you yeah, guys yeah. You get so caught up in everything. What does it say here? You wouldn't believe the amount of couples who are so busy mingling, talking, hugging, mm. and having their photo taken, but they don't remember to eat. There are a couple of things. Number one, you need the energy because you are doing all the mingling, That's all really the talking. Bright, bright. But also, you've paid to eat this food. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have paid for this day. You've been waiting for this day a long time. You have conversed with your suppliers. You can, you've been taking the tastings and stuff. You want to sit down and you want to get your gob around that plate of food and enjoy it yeah. and not go, ah. Oh, um, Sam's food. asked, how many would you cater for in the eve? Is it like 75% of the total? Usually two thirds. Yeah. We, we, we've always gone with a two thirds rule. Um, and that's the including the evening. That's not yeah. just evening, that's daytime and evening, you know, your total and figure. And that completely depends on your timings for your day. For example, we had a half past 12 wedding and we sat down at 3.34ish. We were having a, we had a three course Chinese banquet type thing. And by six o'clock, we were actually. Full. In all fairness, I think we messed up our evening food because I went to get. We we had an issue with our caterer. That's another story. But I went to get a bacon roll, and there was nothing yeah. floating around. Um, just think, if you if you're sitting down later in the day, and your majority of your guests are going to be there for the entire day, and you've only got a small amount of evening guests, and you're eating late, you probably won't need to get a shed load of buffet food or whatever you're getting in the evening. Um, if you're eating earlier and you've got a massive amount coming in the evening, then by all means up your up your quantities. Think about what your meal is. If you're going for afternoon tea rather than having a, a sit down meal, um, you might want to get more in the evening yeah. as well. You but know, the is, is, rule is of thumb your... is two two thirds because by eight pm, some people like this one would have had six or seven pints. I, and... I'll be hungry. I, I know um, a, a pizza uh, outdoor pizza company we work with a few. Th well, no, we haven't. We know. We know. Um, they'll, they'll box up pizzas yeah. cold for midnight anything that's left in the pre-order and everything so that's, a, are... that's a good one getting getting almost like the, the midnight snack and so the, the pizza company they, they will do the, their service throughout the evening and they'll cook to order and a lot of companies will do that if you're going for more street food type they will cook to order and then box up the left for the, for the oh, left Sam for says the afternoon tea then pizza 
it's fab. Yeah. Nice. Can we can come? We come? <laughs> yeah. Right. No, number <coughs> nine. Keep mementos. Now, yeah. The, yeah. So this is a couple of parts of this. So your photographer and videographer. We we right. We think, and this is based on nothing. But if you can find a fit a photographer who will do you a video montage, you're laughing. By the way. Um, that, 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 by the way, the only thing other than mementos that you will get from your day, other than the wedding ring, etc., is the photographs. Mm. So always mm. make sure you have a good photographer, in our opinion. Um, but then, yeah, it talks about a few key. I mean, we've got a wedding box, haven't we? <gasps> Do we? No, where is it? Is it in my mum's? Do we need to dig it out and go through it? Maybe. Maybe. Um, but keep mementos. Again, you spend ages and ages throughout the year, two years, whatever you're doing, six months before your wedding, making all this stuff for your wedding that is so important to you at the time when you're doing uh, the picture on here is of some lanyards that we went we did a festival wedding a couple of years ago and she did very bespoke maps and um glassmere style uh, lanyards for everybody and you put so much effort into the detail that after the wedding just gets thrown amongst the masses or well we, we had bag. all our table centers pilfered we did we did have all our tables we did. The little card numbers yeah yeah, yeah. we only had like four left out of yeah. 12 tables or something well, pikey friends and family we, we do have pikey oh. friends and family apart from gary and kerry because they could be, they were watching a minute ago <laughs> you're not okay but yeah just make sure that you take those bits and you store put you them want... in a box put them in storage and get them out every few years yeah. that's it anniversaries that's it. cool yeah um and number 10 now number 10 this is a sponsored post so this is sponsored by this uh, by a wedding guest planner post, yeah. it's a guest post sorry not sponsored post guest post um, however we happen to totally agree with this and yes we can do it as well but trust us from getting married and everything we know we agree with this and, Num we, and we, dis we discussed this we discuss, last week we discussed yeah. this loads of times we discussed this mm -hmm. like every other week but number 10 is if you can use a planner if your budget allows you absolutely and yeah on the we're talking about on the day aren't yeah. we yeah on the day I mean, like you, help you can go support from all of it, yeah. management whatever we said this last week go from the full plans to just on day coordination but if you are a stress head and this, obviously this post is to talk about a stress-free wedding if you are a particular stress head and you know that you're going to be thinking about things in like 3 a.m you're going to be getting the cold sweats and all that kind of stuff if your budget allows it and you happily want to talk to someone get a planner on board to help you with your day because you just don't need the, the stress well, on the what, day what we, we talk about one, one of my ushers our ushers I never know what we're meant to say last week, was yeah. um, up to his arm in the toilet block because it stopped flushing because it was on a slight incline and we only found out about a week later that he had been in the toilet block mm. fixing it um, another thing was um, when the band arrived who showed the band where to go where to set up you know we had a friend doing that and then by the time we think about it we had about five or six different friends all doing little jobs Jobs, which knowing how much they all drink could have gone wrong our thing that went, the only minor thing that went wrong for our wedding is that we did the speeches and the speeches are great and I even did a little toast and said thank you very much for coming oh yeah to we do and then literally as everyone was about to go and party my bridesmaid and went flowers we didn't we they were and all we in a pile part, we had a pile of flowers for all the mums and all the helpers and stuff that were behind the catering tent that we didn't have that event planner type person to go don't and next, don't it. forget that. We just well, luckily our bridesmaid stepped in and said, "Don't forget the flowers." But it's those little details. If you're doing that, and you, you might not even get gifts and stuff. But if you're doing those details, make sure someone knows. And an event planner yeah. is always going to be someone who will make. And, and they, they do it week in, week yeah. out, and they know the format. It, it, it is, and, and look, we've said it before. We, if your budget allows, then that's what we suggest. You know, that should almost be a luxury, shouldn't it? Yeah. Uh, just to deal with the crap that might happen. You know, we're not talking about. Jennifer Lopez in whatever film she was in with full on radio mic and everything oh, that would else. Be really cool. That would be really cool. You know, there are there are lots of um, what's the polite term? Lower budget planners. It, it, again, it, you know, it depends. On, in, in this group, I know there are lots of DIY budget brides here, but I know there are also lots of people with high end budgets yeah, yeah. as well. It, an outdoor wedding encompasses everything, and I actually think if you're going with an outside wedding. Budgets aren't always, you know, they, they are tight because you're no, spending we get, so we much. We get nervous when we talk <coughs> about money because we don't want to no, alienate anyone. No, but budgets are increased because you are starting from scratch from a flat old bit of grass and you are building your venue up from, from the ground up. So we understand that things are quite pinchy in terms of y y your pockets yeah. with, with um, money and stuff. So if your budget allows, investigate it. It might just be the yeah. on-day coordination where someone can pick up a clipboard. <coughs> you've already told, you've briefed them two or three days before. Yeah, you're giving them a running they order see, and having a they meeting. They see your suppliers in and 
Bob, Bob, Bob Strunkle. Yeah, there we yeah. go, Bob Strunkle. Yeah, because if your caterers are late, otherwise someone, someone, you've got to get up and go and go, what's going on, yeah. which you don't want to do. Is anyone disrespecting there? Or is it uh, no, that's Sam's still afternoon tea, then pizza, yes. which sounds amazing. Well, I think we're going to call it, uh, call it um, okay. a day there. So we've loved being outside again. We hope you're enjoying this uh, heat wave as much as we are. Mm, the um, sun is just stunning. Oh, it's beautiful. We, we, I, I, I've said this. We think we've had some of the best months of sun and sunsets in a long time. I if mean, we get to July and we start getting rain, I don't want any of you guys to go. It's been the worst summer on record. Well, yeah, but if they're getting married in July, they're allowed to be a bit cheesed off. But ultimately, I think today it's been an amazing it's been summer. An amazing summer. Yes. Right, guys. We'd like to thank you as always Thanks, for guys. coming and watching. Uh, Instagram TV. We're quite excited about that. We want to get on that really early, don't we? So that's why we're doing that. Um, yeah, feel free. I think you can now subscribe on these. I don't. I've not really delved into the, the world of IGTV. Too feel free much. to subscribe. Yeah, I, who knows where we're at a point for that one? Um, but we, we are going to investigate that because we do like it on video. You may have noticed we yeah. like to talk. It um, is Laura stunning, stunning. <laughs> She's just this beautiful night. It's gorgeous. It is yeah. gorgeous. So we're going to start that channel. I think you can subscribe to channels now, a bit like you do on YouTube. If you haven't subscribed to YouTube, feel free to do that too. YouTube.com <laughs> forward slash C forward slash Bailey Beltons, <laughs> and then obviously the outside I'll ride on, on in, the playlist. Instagram. Yeah. Oh yeah, sorry on that. Right, come on, that's enough of that rubbish. Right, um, it was lovely to see you all. Thank lovely. you everyone who has commented this evening. Yeah. Um, Sam, I hope that's answered your question as well with regards to outdoor games. I'm sure there's loads you think of. Pinterest is a win for that. Yeah. Kind of or stuff. put a post in in the group and see what others chuck up as suggestions because there's over 400 people in this group. So you know you only need 10% to give you a suggestion, and that's a lot yeah. to choose from. Right, no, night everyone. Thank you very very yeah. much and we'll see you next week bye, bye. bye. Okay. yeah it's, it's going a bit funny but no it's not done <laughs>